Okay, in this video I'm going to try and demonstrate uh, conditional cell colouring, um, which is a, a useful one of the options within X-Rays where you can uh, have certain files highlighted for you um, within the directory browser view here um, in various colours depending on various conditions. As anyone who's familiar with X-Rays is aware, you've got this directory browser view which is this pane here um, and each of these many columns uh, for which you can add various other ones if you've not already got them visible. For example, by default the path column isn't visible. Um, I like to have that in. Um, and to change any of those, you right click any of these columns up here, it comes up with this, and in here you choose the pixel count that you want. Um, so if you wanted to add the unique ID, for example, type in there 50 pixels, and you can change the order using the up and down arrows and the radio button if you want. So if I click OK now, Unique ID appears over there. Um, so what I want to show you is, is how we can change the highlighting of some of these files depending on various conditions. Um, so if I just, uh, I'm using the obligatory NTFS image, here one image, so we've got various files and things in the My Documents here. Um, now if we, firstly for some of these settings, uh, some of the conditional cell highlighting features to apply, um, you might need to refine the volume snapshot um, for various reasons. So for example, let's say you wanted to apply a cell color ring that was activated if a certain hash value or part of a hash value was found, then obviously you need to compute hash values in order for that to take place, um, and so on. So I'm going to just quickly tick uh, most of these, but not all. Um, not going to do that, uh, and I think that'll do. So if I just quickly set that running, I'll just do MD5 for the sake of argument. And this shouldn't take too long, so this is the usual refinement of the volume snapshot, which most people will be familiar with, where it takes the image that you've given it traverses all the file system, finds things, undeletes things, processes email, decompresses zip files and so on. This is only a small image so it doesn't take very long. Now, uh, the cell colouring, uh, you can get to that via the directory browser options. I've just done it through the options up there but you can right click these columns like I just showed you. And the option in question is here where it says conditional cell colouring. Firstly it has to be active, yes or no. So it's it's, uh, I think it's inactive by default. Um, so firstly you need to tick that, but then this ellipsis here allows you to specify the various conditions. Defaults with six, but you can add more or subtract using that. Um, so as an example, um, uh, let's just remember this from a previous setting, so uh, I'm going to go with hash and just a quick glance down here I see that there's one that starts CD2. So I'm going to type in there CD2. You can make it case sensitive if you want. Um, you can specify whether to just activate the highlighting if just the first few characters of the cell match it or not, or it can be any part of it. Um, and you can choose whether to, to highlight just the cell within the actual column or the entire line right across the screen. Uh, we prefer entire line. Um, just on a note there, we use this because um, we like to, although X-Ways comes with its own highlighting, for example encrypted files are usually um, coloured green, um, we sometimes like to change it so it's a bit more uh, a bit more obvious, so you know we might choose to highlight them red for example or something like that, so this is kind of the reasoning behind it. Um, so hash, so anything that I've, I find that's got a hash value that starts CD2, I want it to highlight it yellow. And you have to make sure that's boxed to make it active. So that's condition one. For condition two, uh, let's uh, see there's Facebook down there, so let's just start with face like that. Um, not make it case sensitive and we'll colour the entire line and we'll activate that and we'll make that that colour. You choose the colours up there obviously so let's go with that for the sake of argument. Um, attribute, um, the attribute column there contains various file attributes that which you can filter on and things like that and all the encrypted ones are some form of E 
So because you've got file system encryption, um, f specific file encryption, and things like that, but they all contain any. So if we just put E in there, doesn't matter whether we use uppercase E or lowercase or an exclamation mark first, which is one of the many attribute things. Um, and and, 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 and oh, activate that. And the last one, let's go with highlighting any file that's a JPEG in no, not that green, um, in that colour. And we'll put in there JPEG and colour and timeline. In fact, I'll leave that off just to show you the, the difference. So, uh, and that'll do for me. You can it demonstrates the point, so you can add or remove as you wish. So you click OK, click OK, and straight away, look, you get some highlighting going on here. So there's the one that starts with the word Facebook. There's the one that matches my hash value with the CDT. These are the JPEGs here. There's a red uh, encrypted file, this small pic here that's encrypted, all conveniently colored in for you. So it can make it a lot easier by eye, especially if you're doing recursive explorations of files, uh, of, of folders, sorry, um, to spot things that might not be immediately obvious to you um, otherwise. So, as always, nifty feature worth knowing about.